Thank you for a, another opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. Recognizing that is no power of my own, but because of your grace and your mercy. We pray that your anointing will continue to flow upon everyone that is in this building. Yeah. Bless, oh God, my companion that uh, revives your spirit, oh God, alone and whatever she may be facing, she is blessed. She blessed because God says you are blessed. We pray now that you give us the strength and the power to deliver a word unto your people. A word of inspiration, a word of encouragement, a word that was in through their heart and know that they can look unto Jesus who is able beyond all that we may know even to ask for. He is able to deliver. In the everlasting name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We're truly grateful and we are thankful to God for allowing us to feel His Holy Spirit. And just in case some of us may doubt if what we are feeling is His Holy Spirit. Just stop breathing for a few minutes. And then have a mirror, look in and see how you start changing your color. All right. If you don't believe that God is truly blessing you right now with His Spirit, according to the Word of God, Genesis tells us that God created us in His image and his likeness. Yes, yes, yes. But we were yet lifeless. Uh, yes. We were without life. We had yes. no yes. movement. Yes. No movement. Yes. And the Bible says that he breathed. Yes. He breathed the breath of life yes. into our nostrils. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we became a living soul. So if you are breathing, if you are living, then you are living by the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. It's not of our own, no matter who we are, it's by God breathing into his your nostrils. And then the, the Lord cared to withdraw it back. He had the power to do so. So we should always have a steadfast thanks. When I wake up in the morning and find myself breathing, you should say thank you. When you wake up in the morning and find that you can move any part of your body, we should say thank you. Because you are truly blessed. Truly blessed. See, want to continue our uh, discussion today from the uh, text, 1 Peter uh, chapter 9 and 10. On our last Sunday, we uh, spoke to you on this why that asking a question Are you growing? Are you growing? And we're not speaking of in physical size. But are you going in the spirit, in the word of God? We also discussed that in order for us to grow, uh, some of us need some milk, uh, some salt food. We need to be led uh, through with the milk of the word. And therefore, we, and uh, like while the young man was preaching uh, so forcefully, uh, during the week, I just see how he would nurture us through the milk of the word. Yes. He, he yes. took a verse at a time and he worked with the 
that particular verse. Yeah. He worked with it so as I read the rehearsal in it and continue to dwell on that. That's, that's what we call chewing it up and then place it into your mouth. See that? It won't be any problem of getting choked. Right. Uh, and, and the choke symbolized not understanding the word. He, he took his time and, and went to the chewing of the word. So if there is no other time, if you were present on uh, any of the night that he preached, we should be growing in the word. Tell somebody, we should be growing in the word. And, and when you grow in the word, then, then you, you don't just try to uh, maintain and hold it all for yourself. In order to continue growing, you got to witness to somebody. You got to share it to somebody. And as you share it, you grow and they grow. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And therefore, we find that Peter wrote and uh, they write these uh, this pistols, this letters unto the church. I, I, I wondered about in the church, folks think that they become so well rehearsed, uh, so uh, growing up, until no one can tell you anything. Well, you just missed the point. You just missed what the scripture said, say, because the scripture said that shall be led by a child. Amen. So, so why do we get so high minded mind that nobody can tell me nothing? I know it. We just missed the whole thing. That you, you never stop learning. You, we never graduate from the word of God. You can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and from Revelation to Genesis, but you go right back to the next time you find something if you were led by the Spirit that you didn't see when you were reading it in the beginning. Help me some much. So therefore, we should always see ourselves as children. You find also in the letters and epistles so in John, they mostly address us, my little children. We, we, we never outgrow God's word, y'all. You never get so high and so mighty until you, the, the Bible said, except you become as a little child, you will no longer see the kingdom of God. So, so don't feel that you got to be such a macho individual or that you have so much as you uh, Macation and Pastor Johnson would say so that no one can tell you something. You just flunk the course. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You, yeah. We, we yeah. just flunk the course whenever we feel that we have all the error. And I hope y'all have your Bible. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it open. I hope you have it. Stay with me. I'm going to spend a little minute. Y'all got your Bible? Yeah. Let's see what's in the Bible way. You know this? That, that, that's what they can see in Bible. All right. I, know, I know the word is with me. Amen? Yeah. I, I know the word is with me. I know the word is with me. Yeah. 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 Brother, Brother, don't be afraid to show your Bible. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't, we, don't, we, we, we may not be ashamed to hold up our Bible. We, we, not, we, we, we may not be ashamed to know that we are witness to what the Lord said. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So therefore, we find in this we left there after that we went down that you are a chosen generation you've been yeah. chosen by god for this day you've been chosen by god to go through whatever you are going through with god has made you a winner and we didn't want to know we had nothing to do with it god by himself he the father son and the holy ghost decided look like upon you so they can take this they can, they can represent me they can be my ambassador in the they can go to the world and tell the world that Jesus saved. They can come up to the utmost he saved. They can tell that if you believe and go forward, trust in the Lord, you shall be saved. Amen. Now there's a turning point that we want to talk about. You know we have a lot of um, Christians and sometimes I may have made that uh, same old mistake myself to say all you gotta do is believe. <laughs> if you have ever heard that, or heard from me, I want to tell you that that's not correct. <laughs> you can believe.
believe a lot of things. The Bible says the devil believed and he trembled. Amen? The devil believed. So whenever you hear the term that just believe there's something else that's going to come along with that. Amen? When you believe it, hallelujah, that you believe it, then you got to act on it. you got to live through it. You must put it to use. If, if I give you a basketball and tell you to make two points, if you just dribble the ball, you'll never know if you can make the basket or not. But if you keep shooting at the goal, come on somebody, if you keep trying to get the ball in the goal, after a while you get the rhythm of it. You get a set eye and you just might make Three points. Yeah. 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 So therefore, you are chosen generation. Yeah. We talked about that. You're a royal priesthood. We, we talk about that. Then the, after all of this, you're a holy nation. Yeah. And then the part that we really like that you are a what? Peculiar. You're supposed to act different from the world. You just don't, you just don't fit in with the world. We, we just don't sit down and feel comfortable when we can find that uh, violence is raging in our community, in our city. We, we just don't sit still and do nothing. We, we uh, don't do no more than come to prayer service uh, and ask God to gear you up. Uh, give us the, oh, I wish I had somebody. You had some concern uh, and know who we are, who God may us to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God didn't give you or give me his Holy Ghost <laughs> just to come into the congregation and sit down <laughs> and every once in a while I say, Amen. <laughs> oh no. You gotta get ugly sometime. You gotta get your hands dirty sometime. You gotta be talked about sometime. But you keep on because God has chosen you. You are the generation you are peculiar. When everybody else sits down to relax, you are busy trying to get some things changed. Yeah. 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 Bring some change. Yeah. Yeah. Brother said, "You are, you are that person. No, yeah. too many, too many of us sitting around, and so oh, things are getting so bad. If you get off your arm um, <laughs> and get into the program." You can make some changes, but we sit around and wait for somebody else to do what God has, cho has chosen us to do. You sit around and wait for the city hall, for the police department, the education. We wait for them to make the change, but God has chosen you. He made you a holy nation that you can speak and things will change. You can stand up uh, and the devil will sit down. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna go to the, 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 he said, uh, oh, so you you should show then you're peculiar. Mm -hmm. And then, then, then he went on and he said, uh, 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 people that you should you should show forth them. Kind of God. You should show forth uh, praise. You know, we, we, some, some of you, you're peculiar. You, you, you're supposed to look happy even though you're going through some difficult time. You're peculiar. You're supposed to tell the Lord thank you when everything seems to be going against you. You're peculiar. You're supposed to be able to stand when it seems like the entire world is going against you. You're peculiar. You're supposed to be able to lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you when nobody else would say thank you. You stand out. Peculiarness means you stand out. You're not like everybody else. You're not fitting into what everybody else does. You are peculiar. God has chosen you to be peculiar. Then he went on to say, uh, in our first person, we live with Mama Fui here now, uh, I pray to him who has called you uh, out of darkness into the marvelous light. He said, with time, uh, uh, you were not a people. We, we were Gentiles. He came to the Jews. We were an outcast. We would they call us dog. But look at us now. You're not just a dog, but you can say you're a holy dog. You're a big dog. You're a peculiar dog. You don't hear me. I do not mind being called a dog if they call you a bulldog. 
And if they call you a fight, you might want to fight. But you are a big dog. You are holy. Holy. Holy nature. Then we went down and we talked. Churches, they talk about the spiritual temple. The spiritual temple. And the Bible says that uh, Jesus made the statement in Mark 12, 11 and 12 that about the cornerstone. And then they talk about the chief cornerstone. Well, my brothers and sisters, without delaying the time, just let me tell you something about the cornerstone. You see, the, when Jesus made this statement, he was talking to the people, the Jewish people, because the Bible says, I come to my own, and my own receive me not. He was then talking to the Jewish. He said, but lo, I turn unto the Gentile. That give us a part of the great salvation. Do I get a witness in here? You see, when the Jews denied Jesus, if God didn't love us so, we would have been left out. But since the Jews didn't take it, God said, I'll give it. In the days, in the days, the old days, the Jews were called Gentiles, doves. But the Lord said, since you call them a doe, I'll give it to the doves. And we became somebody, oh, you don't hear me, in days past, we were a nobody. In the field, in the cotton field, they would look upon us as being nobody. But look at me now, thank God, we brought you from an outhouse into an in-house. We brought you from a school in the church into the same school. You can go to Harvard, What about the stone, preacher? Well, as you stand in front of this building, you will notice right in the corner that there's a block with some names on it. That's what you call the corner stone. Well, what's the purpose of a corner stone? Well, a corner stone is usually placed at the edge of two sides. You don't hear me yet. You have it on the corner of two sides. And then the other part of the building is lined up with the corner stone. The corner stone keep it straight. Do you hear me? So we can line up with Jesus, we can walk right. You can line up with Jesus, you can talk right. You can line up with Jesus, you can lift holy hands. If you line up with Jesus, you can tell the Lord thank you in the midst of your trouble. Oh, help me, sir. Well, the cornerstone, Jesus used that as a symbol. For they had many buildings erected in Jerusalem. So they could understand that when they see the cornerstone, when they go to examine the cornerstone, that they can see how it lined up, how it fit there. And so it wouldn't be so hard now to understand when our lives feel out of shape, when we don't know which way to turn, that we need call on uh, the living cornerstone, uh, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, he's able uh, to make a thing straight. Uh, he's able uh, to bring it into subjection. Uh, he's able uh, to make the pathway smooth. Uh, he's able uh, to give us the strength uh, and now we to walk. Do I have any witnesses? Uh, I'm getting ready to go to my seat. Uh, Cross, uh, with the cross uh, on his shoulder. Uh, 
But when he got on the cross, he looked at the world and said it's finished. It's been difficult to get to the cross. But before I got here, I told them if I be lifted up, I would grow.
your family, and now you are suffering because of their sin. Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, that knowledge came from the idea that they didn't grow. Because the Bible teaches us that every top <laughs> must sit on his own bottom. <laughs> And every town must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. So therefore, in the past, I may suffer in a way of what you may try to make me suffer because there are some folks who never forget the bad things, but they can't ever see anything good. Glory to God. Can I get a witness here? My sisters and brothers, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man come to the Father except by me. Otherwise, whatever you have done in the past, whatever my great-great-grandfather has done, good or bad, the only way that I can get to God's glory, the only way that I can get past my limitation is believe in Jesus Christ uh, because he is the one uh, that covered my fault. Uh, you got so many folks uh, that they always uh, have something uh, that they can say evil about you. They cannot say anything good. Uh, glory to God. Uh, let me try this. Uh, I just want you to look at this piece of paper and tell me what do you see uh, on this piece of Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, do you see anything uh, on this paper. Yeah. Do you see anything? Yeah. What do you see on the paper? Yeah. Somebody tell me, what do you see? 